my name is Jeff, and uh, I wanted to ask how many people remember um, Kylene's presentation, one of our interns this summer in August, where she talked about Radiant CMS and using that to build the NIC labs. And look at that. I didn't even have to finish. Several people raised their hand. Lots of people raised their hand. So if you remember, one of the things, a couple of things that she said was a problem was working in teams was an issue because there was no easy way to really share the changes between the two unless she would, they were actually working on a live system. Uh, also, one of the problems we had with that system was that you couldn't actually preview what something would look like until you published it live. Uh, that and if there was no good way to actually try to change a whole bunch of pages and see what they all look like before deciding to publish them. So I want to talk to you about what we've replaced all those sites with since then. <laughs> Radiant is gone. Um, and that was sort of going really, uh, I guess, simplistic and doing just static websites. So all those websites now are just static websites, but using a tool called Nanic, which is a Ruby tool for doing static website generation, which is pretty cool. I'll just jump right into this project. So um, in, in Nanic, you have a couple of things. You have resources, which live in this content directory. And these are all called items. And essentially, all Nanic is doing is taking all of those items, transforming them in some way, perhaps laying them out in nested structures, and then putting them into some kind of directory structure. And along, the, along that path, you can pretty much do anything you want. So everything happens in this rules file that's right here. And there's a couple of steps. There's compile steps, and there's routing steps. So in the compile steps is where basically what you're saying, what do you want to do with your input files? So initially at the top were all the static files, so CSS, JavaScript, images. You're not doing anything. So you just directly translating them right through. So you don't want to process them at all. Um, I'll skip the blog feed because that's a special case. But down here, you go to the all the blog entries. It's doing some fancy coding in here. And so all it's really doing is it's going to take a look at the extension on any of the files in the blog folder. And based on the extension, it's going to run it through different kinds of filters. So you'll see here is a filter, uh, ERB filter, for replacing any uh, Marco, uh, Ruby syntax that you might have in your class. Down here, uh, if you have a .md or a markdown extension, it's going to run through ERB, and just in case you want to put some of that in your markdown. And then blue cloth, which is just a Ruby gem for doing uh, markdown processing. So you can pretty much put any format you want in there, and you just write rules for how you want to process it. And then I will skip down. Uh, you also have layout things. So you process all these, all these files, and then you can put them in a layout, which is much like a template in, in any kind of uh, web development framework. And then when you get down to the routing, Essentially, those files in the directory structure that you have up here in the content does not have to be the directory structure that they end up in. So that's what all of these route things do, is essentially construct some string that you want that processed entity to live at when you're done. So up here, you'll see we have a content folder. There's a blog, and then there's a five or six posts here. They all start with some kind of date string. And then you'll see they have dashes and date string, and then they have underscores in the name. Okay, and then we have some other static pages here. And I will flip over to Nanic here. And there's nothing in my output directory now. Okay. I'll just run Nanic compile. It's going to basically run all those compilation rules, run all those layout rules, and generate a site in the end. So now if we look it out, but we have lots of stuff. And if we actually just come over here, do auto compile. So if we want to change something, it just automatically picks it up. And if we flip over here, essentially this is the same site that we used to have, only it's all static content generation. And I want to show you a couple of things that you might be wondering about features. Okay, there's no, if you look at the URL, it's got this nice URL of just plain old features. So how did it actually do that? Because in here we have a features.html. Well, kind of the cool thing in the way it processes these files is down, we have a folder called features. And who wants to guess what file is in that features folder? Index.html. So it's a pretty neat way that you can keep these really clean, nice URLs, which actually are the exact same URLs we had before. So if there are any links to these pages, they've been maintained. And then all of the blog output, you'll see before it had, up here you see, you know, they were just essentially in one directory with date strings. And now we've got this nice sort of directory hierarchy here with these output files. And eventually we yanked off the string for the folder name. And then there's also some nice um, helpers that also exist in Nanic. 
And that's about it. So Nanic, you can, there's also a lib directory where you can write your own filters and you write your own helpers. And you can get pretty complicated in laying this out any way you want. So while it's still static, it's actually pretty dynamic.